Hello everyone, I am Shyam Pasari and welcome to ASIN Academy. Now in this video, we will discuss what are indices, what are its properties, where we can apply it and we also solve some problems related to it. Now do watch this video till the end because we have provided some practice questions at the end and also in the description box and you will be able to solve them only when you have watched the video from starting till end. So without further ado, let's begin. Now starting with the definition of indices, indices is the plural format of index and it is nothing but the power to which a number is raised. So suppose we have a number a it is to power b, then over here a is the base of the number and b is the power of the number or power is referred to as index so it is also called as index of the number and that's why the name of the chapter is indices. Taking a real life example, so for example if you have a number 2 to the power 3 then 2 is the base of the number and 3 is the power or the index of the number. Now assume that all of you are clear with the definition of indices and without wasting any further time let's move on to its properties. Now properties of indices are more commonly known as the laws of indices and we will discuss all the laws one by one. So according to the first law of indices it says that if we have a number a to the power m and if we multiply it with the other number b to the power m then this number can be written as ab whole raised to power m. Now in this you can note that the bases are different but the powers are same. So if the powers of the number are same and they are multiplied then they can be written as ab whole raised to power m. So let's take a very simple example. Suppose we have a number 2 to the power 3 and if we multiply it with another number 3 to the power 3 then according to this property we should get 6 to the power 3. Now let's verify this fact. 2 to the power 3 is equal to 8 and 3 to the power 3 is equal to 27 and 6 to the power 3 is equal to 216. Now if we multiply 8 into 27 we will definitely get 216. So this property is true and we have verified a first law of indices that says that a raised to power m into b raised to power m is equal to ab whole raised to power m. Now the second property of indices says that if we have a number a raised to power m and if we multiply with another number a raised to power m then this number is equivalent as a raised to power m plus n. Now we will notice that this property is somewhat similar to the first property but there is one little difference. In the first property we had b raised to power n but in this case the basis of both the numbers are same so we can write it as a single number as a raised to power m plus n where m is the power of the first number and n is the power or the index of the second number. Now let's verify this property as well. Suppose we have a number 2 to the power 3 and we multiply it with another number let's say 2 to the power 4. Then according to this property we should get 2 to the power 7 because the bases are same. Now let's verify it 2 to the power 3 is equal to 8 and 2 to the power 4 is equal to 16 and 2 to the power 7 is equal to 128 and that is the result when we multiply 8 and 16. So the second property of indices a to the power m into a to the power n is equal to a to the power m plus n is also verified. Now moving on to our third property or law as you say according to this law if we have a number a raised to the power m and if we divide it with another number a raised to the power n then the result that we'll get is a raised to the power m minus n. Now in this property you must notice that both the bases in the numerator and denominator are same and the powers can be different or same as well it doesn't matter. So the result that we'll get is a raised to power m minus n. Now same like other properties let's verify it. So if we have a number 2 to the power 4 and if we'll divide it with another number 2 to the power 2 then we should get a result as 2 to the power 4 minus 2 which is equal to 4. Now let's verify this fact also 2 to the power 4 is equal to 16 and 2 to the power 2 is equal to 4 and 16 when divided by 4 gives the result as 4. So this property is also true a raised to the power m divided by a raised to the power n gives the result as a raised to the power m minus n. Now moving on to our fourth property. Our fourth property is also referred to as the power law of the indices and it says that if we have a number a raised to the power m and if we raise it to another power n then the resulting number should be a raised to the power mn. 
So the point that must be noticed in this law is that if we have a number a raised to m and if we raise it to another power n then the result is nothing but the product of both the powers. Now let's verify this law as well. If we have a number 2 raised to power 3 and if we raise it to a power 2 then the result that we'll get is equal to 2 raised to power 6. Now let's verify it. 2 raised to power 3 is equal to 8 and 8 square is nothing but 64 and that is equivalent as 2 raised to power 6 because 2 raised to power 6 is also equal to 64. So this law is also verified and it says that a raised to power m whole raised to power n is equal to a raised to power mn. Now the fifth law says that if we have a number let's say a and if we take the nth root of that number then we'll get a result as a raised to power 1 by n. Now this is a general property and you have definitely heard of it or seen it somewhere. So if we take the nth root of a then the result that we'll get is a raised to power 1 by n. Now moving on to our sixth law, it says that if we have a number a raised to power minus n then we can represent it as 1 by a raised to power n. Now let's prove it. Now you know that 1 is equivalent as a raised to power 0 because any number raised to power 0 is equal to 1 and we have a raised to power n in denominator. Now according to our law, if a of a raised to power 0 divided by a raised to power n then it can be written as a raised to power 0 minus n which is equal to a to the power minus n. So this property is also true, a raised to power minus n is equivalent as 1 by a raised to power n. So now let's move on to our seventh law which says that if we have a number a raised to power m and if we multiply it with another number a raised to power minus m then the result of this product is equal to 1. So now let's verify this law. We can write a raised to power minus m as 1 by a raised to power m and we have a raised to power m in the product. So the same numbers will get cancelled and the result is equal to 1. So this law is also verified. Now you can say this that if we have a number a raised to power m into a raised to power minus m then by using the first property we can say that it is equivalent as m minus m which is equal to a raised to power 0 and this is also equal to 1. So you can verify this fact with these two methods and there may be other several methods but the point is if you have a number a raised to power m and if you multiply it with another number a raised to power minus m the result will always be 1. Now moving to our last and the 8th law it says that if you have a number a raised to power m and if we divide it with another number b raised to power m then the result that we'll get is a by b whole raised to power m. Now this is a very simple fact if we have a number 2 raised to power 3 and if we divide it by 3 raised to power 3 then the result is equivalent as 2 by 3 whole raised to power 3. Now the last 2 to 3 properties or laws that we have discussed is basically important while calculating or simplifying certain values. So we will see that how we can use these formulas or laws to simplify certain values and now let's move on to the application of indices. Now basically indices is used in 3 major ways which are as follows. Number 1 simplification of a very large number or multiplication or division of a number or where many different terms are given and we have to simplify it to a single term or a shorter value. Second finding an unknown value. So in this case what you have to do is some number of terms are given and you have to simplify and you have to find an unknown value suppose as x or y and then you have to answer it as the result. So number 2 is finding an unknown value. Now application number 3 is comparison of 2 or more numbers. Now in this kind of questions what you have to do is you have to compare 2 to 3 large numbers and these kind of questions are very common in the competitive exams where you have to write the order or you have to compare 2 numbers which are completely different from it and you have to apply the laws of indices to prove or to find the greater number. Now don't worry we will provide enough videos so that our concept on this chapter will be crystal clear irrespective of the exam you are giving. So let's solve some few examples to strengthen your knowledge on the topic of indices. So as you have seen the question, according to our question we have to find the value of x and we are given that 5 raised to power x plus 5 raised to power x plus 1 plus 5 raised to power x plus 2 is equivalent to a number 3 8 7 5. Now let's rewrite this equation in a simple form. 5 raised to power x cannot be simplified further. 5 raised to power x plus 1 is equivalent as 5 raised to power x into 5 and 5 raised to power x plus 2 is equivalent as 5 raised to power x into 5 raised to power 2 and 3875 will be copied in this line as well. 
Now you can see that 5 raised to the power x is common in these two terms. So we'll take it out as common and we'll get 1 plus 5 plus 5 square which is equal to 25 and the sum is equal to 3875. So the product of 5 raised to the power x into 1 plus 5 plus 25 is equal to 3875. Now you can see that 1 plus 5 plus 25 is equal to 31 and 31 is a multiple of 3875 and when we'll divide 3875 by 31 we'll get 125 as the result. Now 5 raised to the power x is equal to 125 so we can see that 5 raised to the power x is equal to 125. Now we know that 125 is equal to 5 cube so we'll write 5 raised to the power x is equal to 5 cube. Now in indices it is very common that is if the base of the number is same then the power must also be same when the numbers are equal. So if we have 5 raised to the power x is equal to 5 cube and the bases are same then we can say that x is equal to 3 so our answer is equal to 3. Now you have seen the second question according to it we have to find the value of 1 plus a raised to power minus x into 1 minus a raised to power x. Now pause this video over here and try to solve this question on your own and then come back to the video for the solution. So let's find the solution. Now 1 plus a raised to power minus x can also be written as 1 plus 1 by a raised to power x and 1 minus a raised to power x will get copied over here. Now 1 plus 1 by a raised to power x can also be written as a raised to power x plus 1 by a raised to power x and 1 minus a raised to the power x will again be get copied. Now over here simply change the order of a raised to the power x plus 1 as 1 plus a raised to the power x and we have to multiply it with the number 1 minus a raised to the power x. Now this is of the format of a plus b into a minus b which is equal to a square minus b square and it is whole divided by a raised to the power x. So the final value is equal to 1 minus a raised to the power x whole square whole divided by a raised to the power x which can also be written as 1 minus a raised to power 2x divided by a raised to power x. Now over here you can see that a raised to power x is whole squared so we can multiply the powers and it is equal to 2x. Now first in this video we have discussed what is the meaning of indices and what is its definition. Then we discuss the important properties of indices which help us in problem solving. Then we discuss how the topic of indices can be used to solve the problems and how it can also simplify our job. Now lastly we discuss few questions to strengthen our foundation. Now don't end this video over here because the practice questions are right away. So solve them and comment down your answers. That was all for this video and I hope that you understood all the topics covered in this video. And if you have any doubt then you can post your doubts down in the comment section or you can send your doubts to us to our channel's official Instagram or Facebook page and we will surely solve your doubt as soon as possible. Or you can go to the official website of ACN Academy and you can send your doubts to us from there and all the links are provided down in the description. And if you did like the video then please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel ACN Academy.